All right, guys, welcome back or welcome to Running For Views. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. All right, guys, so today we're doing a deep dive into Killian Jornet's Strava and we're gonna see what his best runs are. And in this video, I'm just gonna be focusing on his runs, not his races. So we're only gonna be focusing on his best Strava runs, not races. And in a later video, I'll do a video on his best ever races. And so make sure that you subscribe so you're able to see when that video comes out. So Strava was started in 2009. However, Killian didn't join Strava until June 29th, 2014. So some of his greatest achievements are actually not on Strava. Like his 2009 GR20 FKT, his 2009 Tahoe Rim Trail FKT, his 2010 Kilimanjaro FKT, his 2010 Pyrenees Crossing FKT, his 2011 Mount Olympus FKT, his 2013 Mount Blanc FKT, his 2013 Matter Horn FKT or his 2014 Denali FKT. But anyways, you get the picture. He's done a lot of amazing runs that will never be seen on Strava, which kind of sucks. Another thing to keep in mind is that he does not upload a lot of his runs to Strava. Some examples of this are his 54 hour run that he did in Norway in a big loop around his house. Didn't upload that to Strava. Or his Monte Rosa FKT that he did in 2018, didn't upload that to Strava. You get it, he does not upload a lot to Strava. And sometimes he goes months without posting to Strava. And we all know that he's running multiple times a day, every day. And it's just sad to think that there's so many of his runs that will never see the light of day. But we have to keep in mind that he is the GOAT. So all of his runs on Strava are amazing and they are way better than any run that most people are posting on Strava. So there are still plenty of runs to choose from when it comes down to choosing the top 10 Killian Jornet Strava runs. All right guys, so let's get into it. Woo. Number 10, Norway 10K. All right guys, so I know I said no races, but come on, a 10K, this is probably not even a warm up for Killian. In October, 2020, he ran a 10K in 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That's 450 per mile. So to put that into perspective, Sage Candidate at VO2 Max Production, he was a professional marathon runner. He has a personal best in the 10K of 29 minutes and 47 seconds. And that was on a track. Rack. Killian did this race in Norway on the roads and it had more than 160 feet of elevation gain during the race. Also, Jacob Ingebrigtsen was in the race, so I think that automatically qualifies it for a top 10 Killian Strava run. Number nine, runner versus base jumper. So this was another short run that Killian did where he raced a base jumper up and down a mountain. Now I know this sounds like some kind of Killian Jornet folk tale or something, but it's not. In July, 2019, he raced Tom Eric Hyman, a professional base jumper who holds multiple world records up and down Romsdal Horn. So they both had to run slash climb up Romsdal Horn to the summit and then Killian would run down while Tom got to fly down in his wingsuit. So Killian had his feet, Tom had a wingsuit. I mean, it seems fair enough, right? So in the end, Killian beat him by more than four minutes, which is just insane. Number eight, just another Mont Blanc summit. So Killian has probably climbed Mont Blanc hundreds of times. I'm not exaggerating. But in August of 2014, this is his only Mont Blanc summit that he has on his Strava. And he just uploaded it to Strava like it was another Sunday run for him and like he didn't just climb the highest mountain in Western Europe. Also, he did it in five hours, which is insane. It usually takes people two to three days to get to the summit of Mont Blanc. So let's just say you go up to your friend and you told them, hey, I ran 20 miles today in five hours. They would probably be pretty impressed with you. Killian did that and then added 14,000 feet of elevation gain. 
insane. It's just crazy to think about. I mean, come on, it takes me like five hours to do a 20 mile run if I'm staying in zone one, which you all should be doing too. But he just did it like it was just a, a jog up a little hill next to his house. And it, it just insane. Number seven, heavenly harangue. Now we all know that Norway is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It's famous for its modern architecture, fjords, and of course, mountains, which is why Killian decided to move there. And in July of 2020, he drove three hours from his house to the Harangain mountain range. And unlike normal people who just go to a place to do a little day hike or climb the most popular mountain even, Killian decided to climb every mountain in the Harungain mountain range that was over 2,000 meters, which it is very killing. So like I said, he connected and summited every mountain in the Harungain mountain range that was over 2,000 meters or about 6,500 feet. And it took him just under 21 hours to complete this. It had over 24,500 feet of elevation gain. And this wasn't just like normal trail running. This was literally climbing and scaling mountains. I don't know, maybe he just really didn't want to drive back to this mountain range, so he just thought, I'll do all the mountains so I don't have to come back to this place. Number six, Phantasm 24. So in November 2020, Killian was in the flat phase of his running career. So earlier that month, he had done the sub 30 10K, and then he quickly moved on to a 24 hour event that was hosted by Solomon. And he did this to promote the new Phantasm Road Shoe for Solomon. However, this was one of Killian's runs that didn't actually go according to plan. At just under the 11 hour mark, he had to call it quits due to sharp pains in his chest and feeling dizzy. He still made it 85 miles though at a 706 mile pace and if he would have continued at this pace he actually would have gotten the world record so world record pace for the 24 hour run is 7 minutes and 15 seconds per mile and to be honest I doubted Killian going into this run I thought that there was no way that he would be able to beat the world record just because he's a mountain athlete but as always Killian proved everyone wrong, except for the small fact that he wasn't able to finish. Number five, 24 hour vertical ski challenge. All right guys, so we're halfway through, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. All right guys, so sticking to the 24 hour events that Killian has done, let's talk about the time where he skied up and down a mountain for 24 hours. So in the end, he ended up doing 121 miles and over 76,000 feet of elevation gain. In the Strava post, he said that it was not a fun run for him and that he did not like doing this, but he did it to see what he could do and to push his limits. Also, it was dark most of the time that he was doing this because in Norway, it's dark a lot of the day during the winter. But anyways, that's like going from sea level to the top of Everest two and a half times in 24 hours. That's just insane. Number four, Everest. Speaking of Everest, let's talk about the time that Killian summited Mount Everest. And in true Killian fashion, he didn't just summit one time, he summited twice in a week. So he did this in May of 2017, and it's sad, but both of these summits are actually up for debate whether he actually summited Mount Everest. But come on, it's Killian. He definitely did it. And even if he didn't make it to the actual summit of Mount Everest, even if he stopped a little bit below, which a lot of people are saying that he did, it's still a pretty cool thing to have on your Strava. So the fastest time to summit Mount Everest from base camp is 16 hours and 42 minutes. So on his first attempt, it took him 26 hours to get from base camp to the summit of Mount Everest because he had food poisoning. However, on his second attempt, just five days later, he summited in just 17 hours. That means that he shaved nine hours off of his previous time just five days before. However, this is also hard to prove because his GPS wasn't working. I don't know what he was thinking going up Mount Everest with just a Sunto watch, like he didn't have a GPS or anything, but uh, who knows. So although he didn't get the summit world record, he did do what only one person before him has done, which is summit Everest twice in one week. Number three, Aconcagua. 
So continuing on with some of his other FKTs, Aconcagua was a pretty amazing one. So in December of 2014, he got the FKT on Aconcagua in a time of 12 hours and 49 minutes. So in this run, he did about 13,300 feet of vertical ascent in just 25 miles. But this is not even close to what it said on his Strava, so I don't know what Sunto was doing back then, but most of the GPS tracks are wrong that he uploaded. But this record is impressive because it shaved off more than an hour off of the previous FKT for this mountain. Number two, VK world record. So this run really shows that Killian can do it all, all the way from the 100 mile race down to the vertical kilometer. So in September of 2021, he broke the world record by six seconds, which is held by Philip Gauche, who did it in a time of 28 minutes and 53 seconds. So although Killian did break the world record, he does not get his name in the record books because he did not do this during a timed event, which sucks. Number one. Bob Graham round. All right guys, so for me, this is Killian's number one run that he has uploaded to Strava. And let's get into why I think this is number one. So for me, I think that this is Killian's best Strava run because he broke an FKT that had been around since 1982. So in July of 2018, Killian beat the FKT that had been around for 36 years by an hour and one minute. Let me repeat that. He beat an FKT that had been around for 36 years since 1982 by an hour. That's insane. And in my opinion, he could have actually done it a lot faster than that. However, the weather that day was very hot and we all know that Killian is from the mountains and so he does not run very well in the heat. So the Bob Graham round is a fell running challenge, which traverses the 42 hills in the Lake District. It's a 66 mile course that has over 27,000 feet of elevation gain. And Killian did it in a time of 12 hours and 52 minutes, which is just insane. All right guys, so that wraps it up for Killian's best Strava runs, not his races. So make sure to subscribe so you can see when the best Killian races video comes out. Also, I'll leave all the Stravas in the description below so you can check out all of those Strava runs for yourself. Also comment below if you think I forgot any of Killian's best Strava runs. All right guys, so that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.